We've finally got proof of life from Joe Biden. We've heard from him, but we haven't actually seen him after he bizarrely phoned in to that campaign event for Kamala Harris. I want people to remember that what we have done has been incredible and we get so much more we're going to get done. And so I want to say hello to Kamala. If she can hear me, I know she's going to be speaking shortly. And I want to say to the team, embrace her. She's the best. Yeah, and once more, I've caught up with Kristen Tate to get her impressions. Biden has not been physically seen since he dropped off the map on Thursday. Yes, he supposedly called into this Kamala Harris event, uh, but we have not seen the president of the United States. And there are people asking questions right now. Is it possible, for example, that the president had some sort of medical emergency last week that he has not recovered from and cannot recover from? Is he on his deathbed? Or did he really just have COVID? And was he confronted with polls that he can't beat Trump and decided on his own to step down? We don't know the answers to those questions. But one thing is very clear, Chris, Joe Biden is not running this country right now. He may have not been running it for a long time. We have no idea who's in control right now. Yeah, it's a bizarre situation because it's the easiest thing in the world for him to organise a camera and uh, do an address to the nation, whether he's in isolation or not. It's been done many times before, yet we haven't seen from him. Let's have a listen to a bit of what he, more of what he had to say with Kamala Harris here. And here he is talking about his decision to quit. I know yesterday's news was surprising and uh, it was hard for you to hear, but it was the right thing to do. It's, uh, it, I, I know it's hard because you poured your heart and soul into me to help us win this thing, help me get this nomination, help me win the nomination, and then go on to win the, win the, the presidency. But, you know, you're an amazing team, but we've got a great, great, I think we made the right decision. Yeah, he says it was as a surprise and it was a hard thing for the campaign team to hear. I think, no, it wasn't a surprise and it was bloody good news for the campaign team because they can actually move on to a new ticket now. But they tell us uh, that Kamala Harris uh, reckons she's got about half the delegates she needs for the nomination already in the bag. Yes, that's what we're hearing, but I'm not certain it will be Kamala Harris. Uh, she she doesn't poll very well against Donald Trump. So I think right now the Democrats are deciding who it will be. Of course, all of the potential names we've heard thrown into the mix for over a year now, like Gavin Newsom, they've all said that they endorse Kamala, but they have to say that right now. I do find it kind of humorous, though, Chris, that Biden and the Democrats are still going with this line about beating Trump and, oh, we need to save democracy. I mean, this is the party that just forced aside the candidate who was voting voted on by their own constituents and will now replace him without any real impactful uh, uh, voice from the voters they claim to care so much about. So I don't want to hear any more from the Democrats about caring so much about our precious democracy. All they care about is power. Yeah, it is a stale line, no doubt, but I'm going to make you hear it again because here was uh, Joe Biden speaking on the threat of Donald Trump. Well, we still need to save this democracy. And Trump, Trump is still a danger to the community. He's a danger to the nation. Yeah, there we go, Christian. You know, well, the only line they've got is that the orange man is bad. But this other point about desperately trying to save democracy, I come back to this point, and I don't think enough people have been making this point. If Joe Biden believes he's not up to another term, and if he believes that Kamala Harris is the best person to lead the United States, then the obvious thing for him to do would have been to resign from the presidency so that she would be sworn in this week, not spending her week trying to muscle up the, 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 uh, the delegates for the convention. Right. I mean, if he's not fit to run for office, how in the world is he fit to serve? And, and I think a lot of people are slowly starting to come to that realisation. And uh, we, as I mentioned before, we don't know who's actually running the show here. Uh, but the Democrats, this is what they're going with. And apparently to them, democracy means lying to conceal your candidate's mental fitness, then rigging your primary by blocking alternatives. And then when you're exposed for lying, uh, staging a coup to remove your own candidate and forcibly shuffling in someone else without input from the voters. It's all really gross and anti-democratic. And I, I I suspect they're going to lose a lot of moderate voters because of all of this as people start to understand what's really going on here.
Yeah, I think you're dead right, because it absolutely undercuts their whole argument about being the, the, the custodians of democracy. They are playing, playing with democracy as their own plaything, and it's a line that the House Speaker, the, the uh, Louisiana Republican Mike Johnson, was on to. Have a listen. I have uh, suggested that the president should resign. The reason is, if everyone acknowledges that he is incapable of running a campaign, then he's clearly incapable of running the country. I mean, he has the nuclear codes. He has major decisions that he has to make every single hour of every day, and he does not have the faculties to do so now. Yeah, House Speaker Mike Johnson there. Now, Kristen, this is a powerful point because for our audience here, just, just remember, of course, Joe Biden remains the president throughout the campaign under the American system. You know, he's president till January. So the whole time that Kamala Harris is out there or someone else trying to say, vote for me, Joe Biden's in charge, admitting that he's not up to another term. And, uh, and the fact is he hasn't resigned. So the question that you, you put, the, the very pointed question, is going to be there right throughout the campaign. That is, who is actually running the country? Yes, and it's actually terrifying because our enemies around the world are watching what's going on right now. And the time to do something bad and nefarious would be between now and January because the entire world knows we are weak. Our enemies know this. They know that nobody's in charge right now. That is a terrifying prospect. Uh, so I am very scared of what's going to happen in the next few months you know, based on what's happened in the next week, we can only guess what's coming, but it's not good. Uh, the Democrats are lying. And, uh, you know, will, will President Joe Biden even make it to Election Day? I don't know the answer to that question, but it'll be fascinating to see what unfolds. I think you're right. I think the pressure will now increase on him to resign altogether. It's going to be fascinating as ever. Thanks for joining us again, Kristen. Thank you very much, Chris.